Hey guys, it's Brendan with Silo.Tools and I wanted to make a quick little video on all the updates that we have made to the Chrome extension. Um, the first one is, let's just talk about how to update. So if you go to your extensions and sometimes uh, Chrome extensions and Chrome itself do not automatically update once you have Chrome open, leave it open. So I'm, I'm a person who always leaves Chrome open. So sometimes what you'll notice, it'll have like a little up arrow over here saying you need to update or sometimes your Chrome extensions won't update. Um, if you close your Chrome and open it back up again, it'll automatically update. Um, but again, if you'd like to leave a lot of tabs open, you can jump into extensions. You can either hit this little button right here in order to reload or update, um, or you can turn it off and then turn it back on. It would be the same exact thing. And so it would, it would pull that update and install that update. And as you can see, um, the newest one is today's date. Um, so we're gonna try to keep this kind of naming convention so you know exactly you know, when the when it was released and what version we were running to kind of make it pretty obvious. So the next update we did was adding, uh, this was a little while ago, but a lot of people did not notice that we actually did this. Uh, we actually added the request for review under seller feedback. Um, this is great for a product that is a little more subjective, a product that maybe works for some people uh, rather than others, or maybe a, a product that's kind of hit or miss on quality, um, and it's quality that you're working on, uh, but you still need to get reviews. So what you can do is sort by positive by clicking positive here and then go ahead and request reviews on orders um, that, uh, that, that people actually like your product, that have left positive seller feedback um, in particular for that particular product. Uh, we do have the op The goal is to roll out the all, all page bulk options, uh, which will be right over here on the right hand side at, um, at some point. But for right now, uh, you can get in there, uh, get your VA to do it or yourself and just click really quickly through. And again, remember, uh, you can only request a review on a product between day four and day 30 of the order. Um, so sometimes you'll get in here and click on it and it'll say uh, outside review window, you jump into the order. Even if they left a self feedback today, you're going to notice that the order was from more than a month ago. All right. Next thing. Um, is the order page. So we had a bunch of updates here on the orders page. Um, as you can see, I went ahead. We do have some rules applied. So we're going to dive into that. What does that mean? Um, so first, uh, as you can see, the Chrome extension has a brand new look and feel to it. It does have some major update news to it. We do have now have a menu on the left hand side. Uh, request reviews has been kind of our, uh, our, our uh, big uh, update to the extension and of course some data options. I'm not going to really dive into these right now. Um, I'm really going to focus on the uh, request reviews. So we added the rules section. Now the rules section lets you specify you know, pretty obvious rules. Um, so you can say, let's just say you have a ton of products and some of them you want to request reviews on and others you do not want to request review on. So it could be uh, title based, it could be, uh, let's see what I have here, it could be title based, it could be an ASIN. So let's just say the title is um, water bottle. So you can say, okay, I sell 15 different water bottles. I want to go ahead and um, uh, request reviews on those. Or you could say, you know, ASIN is probably the more popular one. You could say, okay, I'm going to request reviews on one ASIN rather than another. So there's two ways to do it. You can either include one of the ASINs or exclude one of the ASINs. Obviously, if you include one of the ASINs, it'll ignore the rest. All right. So if you exclude one of the ASINs, so let's just say you have 10 ASINs, and you go ahead and punch in one of them in here, the O1, uh, it will request reviews on nine out of the 10 ASINs. And so if you add, obviously add in multiple ASINs in here, so let's just say ASIN the O1, the O2, so now it's gonna go ahead and exclude two of those ASINs and then delete, delete. Uh, another huge update, uh, which was uh, highly requested uh, because especially for subjective products like, like supplements and beauty, um, is enable and display repeat orders. Now this will do just that. It will show you all your orders where someone has ordered more than once. Now this is not multiple products, meaning if someone orders two units, no, this is two completely different orders. So they order one order on Monday and a different order on Tuesday. What you're gonna notice is right over here on the right hand side, there is going to be a repeat buyer icon. As you can see here, so I know that this person ordered my product and they are a repeat order. This would be a great candidate for me to click the button and request a review. Okay. Now, next thing, send review request to 
only repeat fire. So what you could do is go ahead and click this as well. And what's gonna happen, and I'm not gonna click right now, but if I clicked one of these buttons, this is just on this page, this is all pages. So if I request it just on this page, it would send just this order and no one else. And uh, unless there were other report, repeat orders during this. Next, if I click request reviews on all pages, it's gonna go through all my pages, all 8,167 orders, and it is going to determine uh, how many of them are repeat orders and then only request reviews on those particular orders. All right, so that's what, what you go ahead and just check it. All right, um, and that's really it, guys. Um, and so when you go ahead and set your filters, you just hit save and close, and it's gonna go ahead and close for you. Um, if for whatever reason, uh, it's, it's buggy for, for, you know, let's just say it looks like it's being, request reviews are being sent, but not actually reset. Re, uh, reset review request status. What that means is that if you click here and it says review, uh, request review sent, you reload the page, it will be beiged out. It'll be kind of grayed out that you won't be able to click it again. And you say to yourself, you know what? I don't think it actually was sent for whatever reason you think so. You can reset the status of these, okay? Uh, which is go ahead and uh, click this button. Just would, would reset that. And essentially, that's just kind of clearing your cache, and you can go ahead and request all those again. So it would request all 8,167 again, but do not worry. Uh, Amazon will only send one request, and Amazon will reject if you try to send it again. So therefore, let's just say half of these were sent. Let's just say 4,000. Uh, 4,000, you would get a rejection notice from Amazon. The other 4,000 would actually go through, and then it would be reflected in the button here where it was already sent, or it would say sent. Uh, last thing I guess I did not notice was right over here, skipped by roles. This particular ASIN is being skipped, meaning it will, re it will not request a review on this particular uh, product. Why? Because we have over here where it says exclude by ASIN, which is this particular ASIN. And so if it finds this ASIN in our orders, it will skip over it. So this is what we're trying to do, guys. We're trying to make this as efficient as possible so you don't have to click up every single button a million times. And so you can set your filters and say, look, these eight ASINs I want reviews. These two ASINs I do not want reviews. And then we could come in here. I would recommend, highly recommend, I'd say every four or five days. Uh, worst case, I would say a week. So... How I would like to do it is, yes, this is how I do it. I would, I'd run this extension every five days, okay? And then five days, and then five days, et cetera, et cetera, okay? Then when I get to about three weeks of orders, what I would do is I would go ahead and set my filter here to three weeks. I would do today's date. So I would do, let's just say, I'd back off one day from today's date. So it, it would be like three, seven. Uh, 20 would be my ending date. And then what I would do is go back three weeks. The reason I do that is because there would be some orders in here. That, and let's just say there were about 20 orders. 20 orders that uh, uh, were not shipped out because maybe it was a failed payment. And, and, the, and the person finally updated the payment a week later. And then finally that order went through. But if you do every five days... Uh, you eventually will not go back to those dates because it's based upon the order date. So um, you will need to go back and request those reviews. So again, I would say uh, train your people once a week is, is good. So even if we do this, okay? So one week, one week, one week. And as soon as they hit this week, have them go back to 21 days, all right? And then do it again. So uh, maybe do another week and then go back the 21 days again. That may sound like a lot, but essentially what you're doing is running things twice, all right? Um, let me know if you have any questions. Um, I think that's about it, guys. Hopefully this is a really good update for you and uh, you're kind of excited about the features. We're really excited to, to launch this repeat uh, customer feature. It was requested a ton by you guys. So um, if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks, guys.